In this release of Home Assistant, we have quite some good number of updates right from the dashboard to some new integrations inside Home Assistant. So let's look at them. Firstly, the sections layout view for dashboards is now marked as stable in this release. This means that we can create new dashboard and the default option would be the sections layout which was previously marked as experimental. The masonry option would still be there but now the default will be the sections option. In this release, we also have this option to convert our existing masonry dashboards to sections. For this, you have to edit the view and select the sections option and you will get this option to convert the view layout. On clicking convert, you get this message saying that a new view will be created with all your existing cards in it and the current one will stay untouched. When you click on create, you get this blank view with your cards at the bottom. You then have to drag and drop your cards in the sections the way you want to arrange them in the new sections layout. Now here, if you move only a few cards, only those will be seen when you save the dashboard. You can again click on edit to see the other remaining cards and still move them around and save it. So you don't have to do this conversion all at once, but you can take your time to convert it. Next, we have some more controls on the size of the cards. You can enable this precise mode and then this gives you three times more options for width and height to precisely size your cards. This is something that I really liked and we get more granular control over the size of the card. Next in this new release, we have a huge improvement in streaming your camera feed. The camera stream will try to use WebRTC, which is a peer-to-peer -peer connection to provide low latency streams. It tries to make a direct connection between your client, which could be a web browser and the camera to have nearly real-time streaming. In the current Home Assistant version, you can see it takes about 4-5 to five seconds for the actual stream to be displayed on Home Assistant dashboard. But now, in the new release, with the WebRTC support, the stream is nearly real-time and you can see me smiling as I'm waving at you in real-time. This is a good improvement when it comes to integrating your CCTV cameras in Home Assistant and then viewing it in Home Assistant in nearly real-time. Now there is a small caveat here, when we try to access the stream outside your home network, the stream will not be able to use WebRTC connection directly. For this, you will need something like a relay server to pass the stream from your camera to the server and then to your mobile devices. Now, Nabucasa Cloud does provide this relay server and the camera stream would have low latency wherever you go. Next, we have some new integrations provided by our awesome Home Assistant community. And one that caught my eye was this LG ThinQ integration. Previously, I had made a video about how you can integrate the LG washer inside Home Assistant using an integration from Hacks. Now we have this integration directly in Home Assistant that you can authenticate and get your LG devices from the ThinQ cloud integration. So one less steps to get your LG devices in Home Assistant. Currently I was facing some issues while trying to authenticate the LG website but if this works out later I will inform about this so make sure to hit that subscribe button to see the update. Next, we have quite some integration that you can now set up from the UI. One of this is the local file integration that allows you to specify a local path in the UI directly. Like here, I added a path from my config folder, submitted it, and then I was able to view the image as an entity in Home Assistant. Next, we can now see Home Assistant supervised logs without the need of pressing the refresh button. The logs will load live and you can also scroll back to see the previous logs. Next, there was a decision taken some time back in 2023 to split the Canadian French and French as two different languages. But over time, the Canadian French was not updated and it didn't get the new features like timers. So in this release, both the languages will be merged together so that the Canadian French users get the voice features. Finally, we have some noteworthy changes like adding snapshot service for image entity, blueprints for template entities, and a few more. Now, all these updates are based on the beta release of Home Assistant and they might be changes in the final release. Now, if you like to see such updates, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. Now, you can support this channel by buying me a coffee or by supporting me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.